internet! Today I'm gonna show you how to make an advanced animation and this animation is a running cycle based on the hunter character from the game Nosgoth. So here we have our hunter character ready to be animated. If you don't know how to prepare this character for animations, please check my previous animation tutorials that I post in this channel. So you can see here a gameplay video where the hunter character is running and we're gonna try to reproduce the same running animation in 3ds Max. So basically this method consists of taking a gameplay footage as an example, as a reference. Then you open that footage in a video editor or a video player. Then you choose frames that are significantly different from the others in the animation, in the game footage, and you reproduce that exact same pose in 3ds Max. Then in the end we're gonna have a collection of poses, then we can build an animation very similar to the game one, using these poses as references and as keyframes. So let me show you how I make one of these poses. So first I chose a frame in the gameplay footage Then I go to the 3ds Max and I try to reproduce that pose from the Hunter character Once I'm satisfied with the similarity between the pose I generated and the pose from the gameplay footage Then I can save this pose by clicking in copy pose and writing a name for the pose And this will be pose 1 and you can see that between each pose, between each frame I'm selecting for building the poses, I am skipping some frames. And it is good to take notes about how many frames we are skipping, because this information may be useful when we build the animation. So we know exactly how much movement is between each keyframe. So I don't know if my method is the most efficient and fastest one, but at least this method that I'm gonna teach you is working for me very well and is generating very natural animations. So you see me doing this back and forth many times, going to the video editor, looking at the frame, and then going back to the 3ds Max, editing some bones, then going back to the video editor, looking at the frame again, and then going back to the 3ds Max. So I keep in this process until the pose that I'm making 3ds Max is very similar or equal to the pose in the frame of the gameplay video. I try to make the 3ds Max pose as similar as possible to the frame from the gameplay. So this is pose 2, so now let's work in the third pose. One important advice for running animations is that not only your legs are moving, you have to twist other bones as well. Like all these spine bones, like the shoulders, the arms, the head. All these bones will be moving while we are running, not only the legs. If we move only the legs in the running animation, then our character looks very robotic when running. Another good reference for running animations is that when the character's right leg is on the front, then the upper body of the character will turn to the right. And when a character's left leg is on the front, 
then the upper body of the character, the chest, the spine bones will turn to the left. So this is a good reference to make the animation look more natural. As you can see here I have a collection of poses that I built using the frames from the gameplay video as reference. And if I click on paste pose, then my 3D character will adopt that pose. And this function will be very useful for our animation. So let's disable the figure mode to start to work on the animation and let's enable the auto key mode. So now every time I want to set a keyframe I just have to paste that pose in the animation in the frame that I want. Then I skip a certain amount of frames. Now those notes will help me a lot. And then for setting a new keyframe I just paste another pose. And the auto key function will create automatically intermediate frames between those keyframes. I also keep going back and forward in the animation like that in the timeline, so I can check if the animation looks smooth so far or if there is any jumps or any weird movements that should not be there. And we can always fix those problems by going to a keyframe and resetting some bone positions and orientations. And another thing about running animations that helped me a lot is that when I'm doing a running animation, I don't move only the limbs, only the legs and arms and bones, but I'm also moving the whole body forward. So I can have a notion of how the animation will look like inside a video game, for example. I know that some people need a stopped animation when the character is just moving his bones, he's moving his legs, his arms, his spine, but he's not being displaced in the XYZ axis. Sometimes this stopped animation is necessary for importing uh, animations to a game engine. But I found out that it's much easier if you do the animation, if you build the animation moving the character forward. And then after the animation is done and is smooth as you want, then you can delete any displacement in the XYZ axis and then you can have your stopped animation very easily. At least easier than trying the stopped animation first.
Another important thing about running animations is that when you make your model move forward while it's running, you must be careful about the foot position. If the foot that sustains the body slides in the ground, the animation looks very artificial. It looks like the character is floating and trying to run in the air. So the foot that sustains the body during the run, it needs to be planted in the same place. It shouldn't uh, be displaced in any axis. So what I'm trying to do here when I'm moving the body forward and backward is to try to find a point between the frames where the foot that is sustaining the body is not sliding so much. So now we have a very basic running animation for our hunter character and in the next video I'm gonna show you how to refine this animation to make it look more smooth and more natural. Please don't forget to like this video if you like this tutorial and subscribe to this channel to receive the next parts of this tutorial. See ya!